Hi, Com 362 people. This is me, and this is my last video for this class. My last chance to talk to you face to face, as it were, about things that are important in PR writing. The focus of this last video is on portfolio and things that surround portfolio in regard to your preparation to enter the professional workplace. I assume that's why you're here. Uh, it used to be in the old days that a lot of people went to college, especially women, to get their MRS degree. MRS, Mrs. You know, a lot of women went to college to find a guy to get married. That's not the case today. And we assume that you are here to prepare for a profession. So I got to give you my guidance based on 28 years of college teaching you got to really ramp it up. I don't care what you've done to this point, you got to ramp it up when you get ready to graduate. Just a couple of days ago, I talked to one of our graduates by the name of Rachel, and Rachel graduated last year. I'm not going to give her last name because I didn't ask her permission to talk about her. Rachel was very involved in things while she was here. She was a PR student. She was involved in a lot of stuff. She was involved in PRSSA. She was an officer in PRSSA. And if you don't know what PRSSA is, I'm not going to tell you. You got to go find out. So Rachel was involved in all of these things. And after graduation, she applied to a couple of dozen jobs. Rejection, rejection, rejection. And, and don't get me wrong. She was involved. She was smart. She had good grades. She had all the stuff going for her. Rejection, rejection, rejection. Long story short, it took her a lot of times, a lot of applications to get a job. After a couple of months, she finally did. And she's got a job now and she loves it. And she works from home a lot and she's doing PR and she's involved in a lot of exciting stuff. And Rachel is like over the moon happy. But it took her a long time and a long process to get there. And her qualifications were stellar. So the word to you is, you got to get stuff together in order to be ready to graduate. And one of those things you have to get together to graduate is portfolio. Portfolio is an electronic portfolio where you can put your work into it and show employers what you know how, how to do. Because I got another news tidbit for you. You can look down here and see what your diploma is going to say on it. It's not going to say public relations. It's going to say communications. It's not going to say your concentration. Employers don't even really care that much about what the, what the diploma says. They care that you have one because they're really interested in what you know how to do. They want you to be able to write. That's number one. You got to write and you got to write really well. A lot of employers will ask you to take a writing test. And if you don't do well on the writing test, gone. You got to write well. You got to be able to think on your feet. You have to be able to have poise and confidence in the interview situation. You have to have a resume that looks really good. You've got to have all of that stuff. They're also looking for some additional things based on the particular employer and job. And if you've got these, they're really good. Bilingual, a lot of employers are looking for bilingual skills. And it doesn't really matter so much what the second language is. I mean, a lot of employers are looking for Spanish, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that. Bilingual says you understand different cultures. It says they could send you overseas to do something and you'd probably fit in real well. It shows that you have a, an understanding of language. So that bilingual stuff is really important. Can you do video production? Even something as simple as this. Can you do this? Can you shoot and edit a video and upload it to YouTube? and write a blurb about it? Can you do this kind of stuff? Can you create a podcast? Can you do these kinds of things? Employers want to know that, and the more video uh, production skills you have, the better. Do you know social media, and not can you just post stuff? Do you really know strategically how to use social media, how to write posts for maximum impact? You know, writing 140 or 280 characters that can be challenging because it's, it's very short and it's got to have maximum impact. Can you do that? Employers want to know that and they want to see work samples. And portfolio is the greatest thing for you guys because it's free and it'll follow you forever. You can use portfolio forever and you'll never have to pay for it because the CSU system has bought it for you. Okay, so you got to look at the portfolio instructions. You got to watch that 
video tutorial that's up there, up above at the top of Titanium, you got to watch that. You got to look at my instructions. You got to follow my screenshots and set up your portfolio. Then, when you get in there for the first time, that it's got a picture on there of the fountains in front of Langsdorf, change that picture, get it out of there. Put a picture in there, a picture that you have taken, a picture that describes your experiences, something that's personal. Put a picture in there other than the fountain. Why? Because 10 kajillion people have a picture of the fountain. And if an employer is looking at a lot of portfolios and everybody's got a picture of the fountain and you don't, you have a picture of a landscape that you took or it's you skydiving or I don't know, something unique and cool and relevant to what you want to do, the employer's going to go, oh, say, that's different. I want to talk to this person. So get the damn fountain out of there. Put something different in there. As you're loading assignments to portfolio, put a little blurb in there that explains what the assignment is, what class you did it in, and what you learned by doing it. Three simple things. Because so much of the work that you're going to put in there, especially from this class, is hypothetical. You're not doing work in this class for a real client. So if you put stuff in there and don't explain the context, the employer is going to look and go, Lake Michigan Twilight Cruise Company? I never heard of these people. And I, I'm from Chicago, and I, I'm really confused about this. And they're not going to understand. So you got to put a blurb in there that gives a little context to it. So you got to put work samples in there. The more stuff you can put in there, the better off you are. Don't worry about overwhelming people. Employers skip through stuff. They're going to go to the portfolio and just kind of, and they're going to kind of look around and skip through it. Because that's how it is. They don't have time to in-depth read your stuff. They're going to look through there and skip through and see what, what you look like professional, professionally from what you've put in there. So work samples. Now, let's talk about the resume. I'm going to give you a name. Write this down. Cassandra Thompson. Cassandra with a C, two S's. Cassandra, also known as Cassie. Cassandra Thompson, Career Services, Langsdorf Hall, the building behind the fountain, okay? You got to go see her. If you have seen Cassandra, right now you're saying, oh, she is the coolest ever. Yeah. If you haven't seen her, you need to. She is the Career Services rep for our college. She's worked on Wheel of Fortune. I mean, it's crazy. And she's got, she's got lots of experience from the, from the entertainment industry. It's crazy. She's fun to talk to. She's a hoot. You got to go see her because she needs to look at your resume. She needs to give you guidance. She needs to give you tips about where you're going to go with your career. You got to talk to her. You got to make an appointment. You got to go see her. You got to talk to her. Okay. Internship. For many of you, internship is very soon in your future. You got to go look at the internship page and then you got to set a time to talk to uh, Amber Chitty because Amber Chitty is our faculty director of internships. Her office is up on the sixth floor in College Park. That's somebody else you got to see. So write those names down. Cassandra Thompson, Amber Chitty. Those people got to be in your future because you are preparing for a career. You've invested a lot of time, energy, and attention here. You've got to get all the help you can possibly get. Now, both of those two have different group events during the year, okay, that, that you can go join in. The Career Center has all kinds of stuff going on. you got to be plugged into that. They're on social media. you got to be plugged into that and know what's going on. You can go tour workplaces with the Career Center. Why wouldn't you do that? Well, you wouldn't do it if you didn't know about it. And a lot of people don't know about it. They come to me as a last semester senior and they go, do we have a career center here? And it's like, hello. So you got to know this stuff. So remember those two names. Go see those people. Tell them I sent you. You don't have to, but you can tell them, eh, Swanson sent me. Does he know what he's talking about? And they'll tell you if I know what I'm talking about. Okay, so don't take my word for it. Go see it. Okay, last little thing. Let's talk about the resume that goes into portfolio. The resume is you. It's got to look good. It's got to be letter perfect, okay? If employers see typos and stuff on your resume that, sh that I almost said a nasty word. <laughs> if they see stuff on your resume that shows them you cannot write worth shinola, you know where that resume goes? It goes into a paper airplane and then it goes, and then it goes into the trash can. I mean, that's all it takes. One typo, you're done. You're done. Because you're going to be applying for jobs with a whole lot of other people applying. 
And some of those people are gonna have resumes that are outstanding. And those are gonna to go to the, ooh, let's, let's think about these people pile. And then the average resumes and the resumes that don't look good are gonna be made into paper airplanes, or they're gonna go into the, let's run this through the sh shredder file and see how many of these we can shred at one time. You don't wanna have your resume be there. Now, do I teach resume writing in this class? I do not. That's something you're gonna to have to figure out on your own. However, I will look at your resume when it's uploaded as part of your portfolio and I will give you guidance and feedback. So, the portfolio has to contain a resume. It has to contain some uh, assignment samples from this class and I've identified them in titanium. Each one of them has a little icon next to it so you can very clearly see what is supposed to go in, in portfolio. Um, at the very minimum, we need to see a resume and the news release. And don't put in the news release that you sub submitted to me and I made corrections and I sent it back and then you didn't make those corrections and you put the news release in portfolio. Do not do that. Anything that you put in portfolio should reflect, you did a redraft on it after you got feedback from me. It, and, you're done, and don't say, is that right to do? Yeah, of course that's right to do. The portfolio is just a sample of your work. So put the best samples in there. Put the stuff that you worked on. Don't, don't put graded stuff in there because employers don't want to see that. They want to see the best quality writing you can do. What if you're a photographer and you like taking pictures? One of my sons is a photographer. He's, he's, he's thousands of pictures. He's got like 100,000 pictures. He's just an amazing photographer. What if you're a photographer? Should I put some of my port pictures in portfolio? Absolutely you should do that. Employers want to know what your skills are. So if you've got a skill that's professionally relevant, put that stuff in portfolio and then put a little blurb in there and talk about it. I love taking pictures of blah, blah, blah because it shows I know angle and lighting and focus and cropping and all that kind of stuff, balance, proportion, all that kind of stuff you need to know as a photographer. It shows I know all that kind of stuff. So put it in there. Portfolio is about you. It's about you telling the employer who you are and why you are the best person to hire because you've got all of these skills and it's documented by all of this stuff. Here's a kick-ass resume that's been looked at by several other people. I mean, portfolio is your chance to shine and it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. So start working on that now and have it in really good shape. And then for the assignment at the end of this class, you're just going to send me that link to your portfolio. You're going you're gonna to send me that link so that I can get in there and look at it, and I'm going to give you some detailed feedback on it. Meantime, between now and the end of the class, seriously think about talking to Amber and talking to Cassandra because you got to get your wheels going on that kind of stuff. You have invested your life in this place. Everything you are up to this point, you're digging in and investing here so that you can walk out of here with the degree that you've earned to get a job that you will love. So go the extra mile, go the extra mile and make sure you have totally prepared for it. Okay, one last story before we're done. Years ago, I was the director of um, an academic advising unit at the University of Wisconsin La Crosse, okay? It was a center for students, uh, undeclared students primarily, but we served all students. They came in for academic advising. I had a student come in and see me one time. She was a senior, she was in her last semester. She had been in school like six or seven years. I mean, a long time. She was finally getting ready to graduate. And uh, she wanted to know how to best get a job. And so she showed me her resume, it was okay. Didn't really have any work experience on there. Uh, some volunteering, but n no real work experience. And I said, okay, um, you don't have much work experience on your resume, so you're really gonna need to have references, people who will vouch as to you know, your ability to do stuff. So tell me, were you a member of any student organizations while you were in college? Nope. Okay, you don't really have any work experience on here. Do you do any you know, volunteer work with a church or a synagogue or a nonprofit organization or something like that? Nope. Okay, been a member of any professional organizations like PRSSA? Nope. Okay, do you have any professors that you really like and you enjoyed their class and did really cool stuff in their class and you could get letters of reference from them? Nope. I said, what do you do after class every day? And she said, literally, this is what she said. She said, I go home and watch TV. And I'm like, I got nothing. I got nothing. I, I can't help you. I don't know you. I'm not gonna write a letter of reference for you. You've taken all these classes from all these professors. 
you, you didn't, didn't build any right. I, I, I got nothing. So where is she today? I don't know. She's probably still living at home with mom watching TV all afternoon. You know, you, you, a college degree alone is not going to get you a job. It is not going to get you a job. So you got to bust your butt and get out there and you got to have all that kind of stuff to get a job. Um, you have to have real life experience. Uh, you have to have taken classes that give you opportunities for experience. You've got to know social media. You've got to know some basic video production skills. You need to know basically how to put a website together. You need to have had an internship, and you're going to have that before you graduate. You're going to need to have faculty members who can write you references. You're going to need to have a kick-ass resume. You're going to need to have talked to somebody in career services. You're going to need to have all of this stuff because that is what's going to propel you into your first job. The degree alone won't get you there. So please take my advice. Please, please, please take my advice. Please, if between now and the time the portfolio is due, if you want me to look at your resume, send me your resume. I would be delighted to look at it and give you some feedback. Talk to Amber Chitty. Talk to Cassandra Thompson. Talk to other faculty members. Be a part of PRSSA. If you don't know what PRSSA is, go learn. Um, there are other clubs and organizations. Ad Club, Entertainment and Tourism Club, doesn't really matter. Find something, grab onto it, stick with it. ASI has hundreds of student organizations you could be involved in. Do something that will give you guidance for the profession.